just not uh, storybook stories in there uh, for uh, us to uh, uh, just uh, read and think, oh, that's a nice little story. Uh, he's put these, uh, this holy book together, had holy men of God to write it, to sit down and to write it, uh, inspired of the Holy Spirit, that we might read that book, that, that's his love letter to us. That he might speak to us. God doesn't speak to us audibly. Rarely does he ever do that. But you know sometimes he does uh, the opportunity. He speaks to our hearts. But he speaks to us through his word. Through this love letter that he gave us. And it's up to us to get. How do you know what God is telling you or wants to tell you. If you don't ever get out of his book and read it. And how do you know that man standing behind the pulpit is telling you the truth if you don't get your Bible out and read it and examine the Word of God for yourself? You know, in 1 Corinthians 10, 6-10, it tells, about, tells us how uh, Israel, you know, they were trans they continually would transgress against God. If you read that Bible, you know that multitudes of times in Israel, time after time after time after time, they would transgress against God and God would have to rise up somebody, uh, some king, a wicked king in Israel, or, or, or rise up some enemy uh, on the outside to, to bring them into captivity and bondage until uh, they would uh, find out that, that, that they would sin against God and then get on their face before God and cried out and cried out in sincerity until God would set them free. Well, you know, in, in 1 Corinthians 10, 6 through 10 tells us how God destroyed thousands of his people. Hear me. God destroyed thousands of his chosen people on several occasions because of their lust, their wickedness, and their rebellion against him. God destroyed his people because of their wickedness against him. 1 Corinthians 10, 11 goes on to say that these things that happened to unto them were for an example and they are written for our admonition. Whose admonition? Our admonition. That when we read God's holy word, that we know that God will not spare us as well. If he spared not the natural branches, which is Israel, think he's not going to spare the ones that are grafted in or trying to be grafted in? Hello? If we don't walk uprightly before God, God will cut off the unnatural branches and throw them into the fire. We have to walk uprightly before him, holy. The Bible speaks and says, if the righteous shall scarcely make heaven their home, where will the sinners and the ungodly appear? You know, as God in his word showed us how he spared not his chosen people who rebelled, what makes you think he will spare you? What makes you think that God will spare you if he spared not the natural branches? You know, when we are walking uprightly before God, and He is your everything, the plague can fall all around you, but it will not come nigh your dwelling. In the name of Jesus, it will not come nigh your dwelling. The plague will fall all around you, but it will not come nigh your dwelling, because you've made the Lord the Most High your habitation. No matter what the devil tries to put upon you, he will not succeed, because you've made the Lord Most High your habitation in the name of Jesus. I mean, we got to realize this. But when we just playing around with, with God and playing church, you know, we're going to go by way of the rest of them. But when we make the Lord God most high our habitation, he says you'll see and it'll befall what befalls the wicked with your own eyes. But it says the plague will not nigh thy dwelling. Just like the children of Israel when they covered the, the, put the blood of the lamb over the doorpost with, with the little, uh, because it represented the blood of the spotless lamb of Jesus Christ. That's the same thing. We put his blood over the littles, the doorpost of our heart. When the troubles and trials and that come, you know, God will be there to take care of you because you've made him the most high, your habitation, your dwelling place, your hiding place, the place where you can run and hide. Amen. You know, when you're walking uprightly before God and He is your everything, you know, He will take care of you. He has not appointed His wrath upon those who love Him and who are called by His name. He's not appointed us under the wrath. He's not appointed but unto salvation. 
That's what God's appointed us unto salvation. That he might take care of us. That he might save us. That he might nurture us. That he might love us. That he might take us home with him. That's where we're, what we're appointed to. You know, we're not appointed unto his wrath. His wrath shall be poured out upon those, the God-haters and the God-rejecters of this world. No matter how bad things look, remember when you have made the Lord Most High your habitation, He will preserve you unto Himself. When you've made the Lord Most High your habitation, friend, He will preserve you unto Himself. You know, this old body might fall away, but when you've made the Lord Most High your habitation, he will preserve you eternally unto himself. You know, you may suffer. Hear me. We may suffer some difficulties, and we do. The Bible says man's days are few and full of trouble. So we may suffer some difficulties and inconveniences because of man's wrath. Hello? Because of man's sin, because we're in this mess here. You know, because of man's sin, and because of man's wrath against God, he can't hurt God, so he tries to hurt the closest thing to God, and that's his people. That's his creation. We might suffer a little bit of man's wrath, but we'll never suffer the wrath of God, because God said it in his word. When God pours in his wrath and vengeance upon this world, we'll, we'll behold, it said, it said it shall fall 10,000 at thy right hand, uh, 1,000 at thy right hand, 10,000 at thy side, but it said thy plague shall not come nigh. That's what David said. And he was right. He said, you'll behold what God does upon the wicked with your, eye, with your own eyes. Friend, if you do not know this Jesus Christ, who I'm talking about, if you are not in the shelter of his hand, if you're not being protected by him, if he has not got his mark upon you, if you're backslidden away from God, I give you the opportunity today to ask Jesus Christ to come into your heart, to ask him to forgive you of your sins and transgressions. I want you to ask him right now. Say, Lord Jesus, forgive me of my sins. And the Bible says you don't have to go through a long spill of things. The Bible says he's faithful and just to forgive you of your sins if you ask in sincerity. Friend, I want to hear from you. If you've asked Jesus Christ to come into your heart, I want to hear from you today. I want you to write Pastor Todd, P.O. Box 485, Conneaut, C-O-N-N-E-A-U-T, Ohio, 44030. I want you to hear from you. That's Pastor Todd. God's message for today, P.O. Box 485, Conneaut, C-O-N-N-E-A-U-T, Ohio. Friend, and I'll, I'll respond to, to, your, to your letter. I'll respond to whatever you might, your need that you might have. We'll pray with you. We'll fast for you. God bless you.